Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the 17th part of the series of tutorial WordPress 101 for beginner developers. Have you ever heard about Monstroid? Monstroid is basically WordPress on steroids. With this product, you can build easily everything from a single blog page to a gigantic e-commerce to sell your product online. If you don't want to waste time and you're looking for a product that it works out of the box and is really solid, I suggest you to try Monstroid. Click on this video to learn more and access a 10% discount for Monstroid or whatever other theme you decided to purchase from the template monster repository. Welcome again. In uh, this lesson, we're going to take a look on how to create other two very important pages of our awesome theme. These two pages are the archive page and the 404 page. The archive page is the page that you hit, that you actually visit when you click, for example, on a specific month inside a calendar of a WordPress installation. So you're going to visit the archive of that specific month. And the 404 page is the page that handles bad requests to your website. So when a user hits a page that it's, it doesn't exist, that it's missing, you can handle all those bad requests. Instead of just showing an empty page on a PHP error, you can uh, handle those uh, bad requests with a redirect to a 404 page that you can properly style to keep your sweet, sweet users inside your website. So let's take a look on how to create those pages and how to properly populate them. First of all, let's take a look of the current status of our installation of our WordPress theme. So if we access the front end of our theme and we go to the blog, you will notice that uh, here on the sidebar, we don't have any archive widgets, so we cannot actually access the uh, archive within inside a specific blog post. So let's fix that right away. Let's access inside the administration panel in the widget sections. We can put in our sidebar the archives widget. And uh, let's put it down here and let's title it archive. And I want to show the post count and let's save it. Let's go back in our front end, refresh. And now we have the archive. So month by month, all the blog posts that I publish in, in those specific months. Of course, there are plenty of plugins with a way better archive, but this is just for this actual purpose, this example. So bear with me with this super ugly archive. But anyway, if we click on May 2015, we should be able to see to see the three posts that I published on May 2015. But if I click, it doesn't matter which one I click, I keep seeing the standard blog page. If I go into blog posts, these are the latest three blog posts that I publish. If I click on May 2015 or February 2015, it doesn't matter. We are going to see always these three blog posts. This is happening because we don't actually have an archive page that can handle the archive request. So when we click on May and we actually take a look of our URL, we see the here and the slash the month. So this is a proper request from WordPress to access all those blog posts from this specific month a year, but we missed a specific page. So let's go back in our text editor and let's go back in the list of our files. And now we can create the page that has to handle the archive. And as usual, WordPress helps us to create specific pages for a specific purpose. So if we need to create the archive page, the page is going to be called, of course, archive.php. Pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> Let's access this page and to save some time, instead of writing again the all the code, we can copy paste the uh, code from the index.php file that it's going to be pretty similar because I want to print a blog loop of all the blog posts that are requested through the URL. So I want pretty much the same structure. I want my header, I want my central column with the blog loop, 
and I want the sidebar on my right column and the footer. So I want to maintain this post navigation because I like it. And I want to maintain pretty much this entire structure. The only thing that I want to change actually is the visualization of the page. Like I don't really want this fancy visualization of the blog post. When I access an archive, I want to tell my user visually that it's inside the, he is inside the archive page. So the archive page shouldn't look exactly like the blog page. That could be confusing. So in my case, I want to create just a simple list of blog posts with the featured image on the left. Let's remove all the things that we don't need. So we don't need to specify the variable. We don't need to check what kind, yeah, what kind of variable I have right now so that I don't have to dynamically change um, the column width. I can remove pretty much everything inside here. I can remove the increment of the custom variable that I created. And inside here, I can simply call the template um, that I want to use to handle my blog post. So let's reopen our PHP tags. And let's use the function that we already know or get underscore template, template underscore part. And inside here, we specify as a first string, as a slug, the content, that is the first part of my template, and the second part is archive. So now what I have to do, I have to create the PHP file content-archive, because it's the one that I'm calling from the archive page, dot PHP. And as usual, because I don't want to rewrite everything from scratch, I already wrote that, that part, I can access the content.php, the generic content of my blog page, and copy the entire um, structure, HTML structure, copy and paste it in my archive. But in my case, I want to remove the content, and instead of the content, I want to just put the excerpt here and the excerpt here. In the archive page, I don't want to print the entire content of my blog posts, but just the excerpt, so just to give a hint of the content. I can keep everything like that, so I'm going to have the title with a specific link to the actual blog post, that it's really important, don't forget that, and the um, uh, publishing time and date and the category where this blog post has been published. Let's save it. Let's close this, close this other one. Let's access our installation, our front end. Let's click on the archive. And we have here, as you notice, the list of content that we created. So we have the title with the link to the specific blog post. We have the posted on with date and time. So all these blog posts are posted on July 2015. So you can see it's July 11. And we have the category. We have the excerpt and the future image left aligned. But there's a problem here. So if you notice here, I clicked on May. So if I click again on May, I'm on July. If I click on February, it's still July. So I'm actually looking, still looking at the same exact blog post that I have here on my blog page. How is that possible? Just simply because we actually didn't, we actually edited the query posts while we were creating a custom navigation to do previews and post links. So instead of doing this, let's completely remove the custom PHP that we created to edit the query post. Let's leave the standard query post. So let's not touch it. And the loop is going to, it's going to start automatically without us touching anything. And we can remove also these navigation here. And let's put 12 and text center. And here, we can put another 
native WordPress fu function that is the post navigation. So let's open PHP tag again and let's call D underscore posts underscore navigation. This function automatically will create a navigation without uh, the necessity from us to edit the query post to customly navigate through all the blog posts. We can also safely remove the WP reset query because we didn't actually edit the query post, so we don't need to reset that query. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's click on July and it's not working. So <laughs> it's normal. When it's not working, what we have to do, we have to access the WordPress installation. Let's go back in our base root. Let's go in the config file and let's put WP debug display to through, save it. Let's go back in our front end again, refresh. And we can see here we have a parse error archive PHP on line 31. So let's take a look what is wrong in our archive on line 31. We have the footer here. So for him, this is wrong. So that, that this is something that is not working. So the problem is, of course, I forgot to close the if. <laughs> if we take a look here, we have if have posts, we open the while, we call the post, then we close the end while, but we don't close the if statement. So we don't close end if. This is a mistake in PHP. So that's why the error has been triggered. And let's close end if, semicolon. Let's go back, refresh, and ta-da, we see how our thing. So this, Error message that we uh, that WordPress is printing is a strict standard. It's not an actual error message, but is a declaration, uh, a compatibility declaration from PHP and WordPress that indicates that we should actually edit our Walker PHP online 86 and the Walker nav start level should be compatible with the Walker nav menu basic start level. So I should use the same format. It is not an actual PHP error. So we can avoid it. We can ignore this error and do not see it again. Let's go back in our WP config file and let's put false. Save it. We can close the file and we can go back in our WP content themes, awesome theme. And we're again back on the root of our team. Let's go back in our front end, refresh, no more error. That's nice and everything is working. So now if I click on May, I'm gonna see all the blog posts. Now finally it's working, all the blog posts that are posted, uh, that were posted on May 2015. And it's the same for February. I have these three blog posts posted on February and the post navigation is not showing because I'm inside the limit of three blog posts per page, uh, also inside the archive. So the generic settings that are inside reading and is like 10 blog posts per page are applied also to the archive page if we don't edit the query posts. The other thing that the archive page did is as created uh, an archive also for the category. While before, while clicking on the category, we were accessing another blog page uh, with the list of all the blog posts with the same category. Now, this archive page is overriding that archive, that category page. So now we are still inside the archive page. You will notice it from the same because the blog posts, they have the same style, but the URL is actually calling the category news. And we have all the news that we publish it inside that category. Isn't that beautiful? And isn't that super simple to achieve? The other thing that I want to do in this archive page is I uh, want to specify a title of my archive. And in the case of 
a category if the category has a description i want to print also that description to do that we can just simply use other two native uh, wordpress function to do that wordpress is incredible it gives us pretty much all the functions uh, necessary to print whatever we want and whenever we want so let's close here the php tag and let's reopen it here so i want to put my title and my description of whatever archive i'm watching between the if opening and the while so i'm not going to print any title if i don't actually have any posts but i'm not going to put my title inside the while loop otherwise my title is going to be repeated for the same amount of mm, the same amount of blog posts that i'm printing so let's reopen again the php um, tag and let's use as a first parameter the function d archive title this string basically will grab automatically the archive title that i'm looking at so if i'm looking at the uh, july 2015 i will have an archive title of july 2015 if i'm looking at the category news i will have an archive title of category uh, column news this is really handy because automatically the archive title function can handle all the different derivation that is like month archive um category archive or tag archive this it's it's really fast and we don't have to worry about changing the uh, prefix of this uh, archive title uh, what we can change though is the before and the after of the title what i want to do is i want to use an h1 tag to wrap the actual um, category title so i'm going to use class and let's create a standard class like call page title let's use this as a page title let's close this and as a second string that is the after the actual archive title i'm gonna just simply close the h1 maybe if i write it properly that will work better and let's use the semicolon the other parameter that I want to print is the archive description. The archive description. So the archive description is going to print something only if what I'm looking at has a description. So if I'm looking at a category that has a description, this parameter is going to be printed. This is pretty handy. And also this one is dynamic, so it's going to recognize whatever thing we are work we are uh, looking at right now so we don't have to worry of printing something that doesn't exist or checking if we are in a category in an archive or in a tag so let's use a random class this is a taxonomy i'm gonna do a video tutorial about taxonomy in the next lesson but for now let's call this description a taxonomy description let's use it as a class because this is actually a taxonomy but don't worry if you don't know what's a, what a taxonomy is you're gonna know it pretty soon let's wrap this around the string and let's close this semicolon now i want to create another little bit of html separation so i want to use the header html5 tag and open a class page header close and let's close the header tag and let's indent properly to have a better visualization let's save it let's go back in our front end reload the page and now we have category news because we are watching the news category if we click on july 2015 we have month july 2015 see how powerful is the archive title and let's do something else so if we click on tutorials we're gonna have category tutorials but if we access the administration panel and we go inside our posts categories and we access the tutorials we have the description of the tutorial so let's write something nice like list of tutorials and um, tips for 
developers and designers. Boom, let's save it and refresh our front end. And ta-da, we have our wonderful description that it's gonna work only if the description exists. So if I, in a month, I have no description, so it's not gonna print an empty string, nothing is here. But if I am in a news that doesn't have a description, the category, I'm not gonna print it. But if I click on tutorial, I have the description of the tutorial. This is totally automatic. I don't have to do anything because it's beautiful. The other topic of this lesson, as I said, is the 404 page, that page that gets called by WordPress when a user hits a part that actually doesn't exist in your website. So if we manually type the page name that doesn't exist, for example, um, portfolio, I didn't create a page portfolio, I didn't have a page that handles portfolio, WordPress is going to the actual index page. So the first page is the block page and it's saying, if you notice though, WordPress is visualizing the blog loop is the default page for the blog post. But if you notice here in the title, we have page not found. So this is a mistake of WordPress that WordPress cannot find the page that we're hitting. So the portfolio page that we didn't create, but cannot handle properly the styling of the content of the page. So he grabs the blog page to print the blog post. So this is confusing because if a user is, is hitting the portfolio and is watching this page, probably he could think of, oh, this is your portfolio, but it's weird because you don't have a portfolio here. And if you notice the page title, it says page not found. So we have to create a custom page to handle bad requests to our uh, WordPress site. To do that, as usual, accesses our text editor, and let's create a new file called, of course, 404.php. Simplicity and consistency are beautiful. A 404 page is a page that we can style however we want to handle that request. So first of all, we have to input the usual thing that we need to create a page for WordPress. So we need the header, get header. And then we can copy this, we put it down and we can call the footer, get footer. And in my case, I don't want the sidebar, but I want a full page with some specific widgets that I want to custom create. So let's create a little bit of HTML boilerplate to uh, properly style this page. Let's open a div, let's put an ID of primary. Let's put a class called container as usual. So our page is gonna be nicely wrapped around the container of our bootstrap CSF framework. And inside here, let's open the main HTML tag, ID, ID main and class can say site main and role is an HTML5 markup. Let's put, this is the main role of the page, the main handler container. And inside here, we can create a section with the class error dash 404. So we can style this page and we can also put another class called not found. This is our totally arbitrary class. This is uh, pretty much these are standard classes that are uh, used by WordPress to style the 404 page. So I'm using the default pages, the default classes that you can find inside at 2014 or 2015, but these are totally arbitrary. You can call these, you, you can define this class however you want. You can name those classes however you want. There's no limitation about it. It's just a boilerplate stuff. So don't worry too much about this section. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to create a header to tell the user, hey, this page doesn't exist. What the hell are you doing here? So let's use page header. Let's close it. 
let's open it, go down, let's call an h1 tag, class page title, and let's use always h1 for uh, SEO purpose, if you care about SEO. And now here we can put a hmm, common title like, uh, sorry, page not found. This is a pretty standard uh, 404 title for the page that cannot be found. And in this page, now we can put mm, pretty much whatever we want. Usually a 404 page is a um, good way to uh, keep your users from leaving your website. So let's give them a, some funnels. Let's give them some call to actions to go. So maybe the archive, the recent posts, or the category list where they can click and keep navigating your website without uh, leaving because they feel frustrated of eating a page that doesn't actually exist. So let's open the uh, dev class page content. Let's close it here. And as a first, I want to put an H3 because I want to use a sort of subtitle and I want to use a message like it looks like nothing was found at this location and we can say like maybe try one of the links below or a search question mark in this way we are totally engaging our user they're gonna feel so engaged they cannot leave our website right so like we did in a previous lesson the first thing that i want to do i want to print the search form so a user can use my search form to do that i'm going to use the uh, wordpress function get underscore search underscore form and this one is going to print my search form from the file search from dot php pretty easy right then underneath here i want to reopen again the php Ooh, what did i do common z I want to open again PHP tag and I want to print my first widget. So we're going to learn something new here. Usually a widget, to add a widget, what you do, you create a sidebar, you put the widget inside there and you print the sidebar. But there's a function that gives us the ability uh, to print a widget inside a specific page, inside a specific PHP page by calling the widget unique ID. If we know the unique ID, we can easily print it. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna print some pre-made widget of WordPress. So to retrieve those IDs, you can just go inside the WordPress codex and take a look at all, all, all the native widgets. It's pretty easy to grab those widgets ID. So right now I'm gonna use the function v underscore widget. Ta-da! And inside here we have a bunch of arguments, but we actually need the, just the first one that is the unique ID of the widget. So I want the default WP, all capital, underscore, widget, underscore, recent, underscore, posts, semicolon. Oops, and down here, I want to create another widget area with my categories. So I'm going to open the HTML tag div class. I want to use the widget class that is the full, is the default class of WordPress and widget underscore categories. And remember also those, these classes that I'm, I'm using, you can totally change them. They're not like strict and you don't have to use this. It's, they're totally like uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. You have the freedom of change classes name and tags and whatever order of HTML markup. This is just an example. Don't be um, afraid of changing things. So let's use, uh, actually here I wanna use an H2 
because there should be the order. And here I want to use an h3 and put it here. Check the most use categories. Woohoo! That looks so exciting. And now I can print uh, order list with the ul tag. Open again the PHP. And inside here, I can call the class, the, sorry, I can call the function wp underscore list underscore categories. So this class, if you don't specify any type of arguments, is going to print all the uh, categories that we have in our blog, in our WordPress installation. Um, but I want to specify a bunch of parameters. These parameters will help me to uh, order properly and display properly all the things that I want. So first of all, I have to open an array because the arguments that this function accepts uh, is an array of arguments. So always open the array. Inside here, I want to specify, first of all, I want to order my categories by the most used. So let's use the declaration, the arguments ordered by, and let's use count. So the category that has more blog posts is going to come first. Second is order, we have to specify if this count is ordering in a descending mode or mode or an ascending mode. In my case, I want a descending mode or capital. This is an SQL, a database language declaration, so it has to be all capital, all uppercase. <laughs> Show, oops. The third parameter is show count. I want to show the user how many blog posts are inside a specific category. So this is a Boolean and accept one or zero. Zero is false, one is true. So I want to show the count, the amount of blog posts per category. So let's put one. And I don't want any title for my list. A single Lee, so I'm gonna put the title Lee as an empty string because I don't want anything to destroy uh, my beautiful list. And then I want to limit the number of category if I will ever have uh, that amount of category to just uh, five. But this is a parameter that we can skip if, like in my case, we have just four or five categories. But if we have like 20 categories and we don't want to overwhelm a user, we want to show them just the most used categories, we can put a limit of five or four or three or whatever you want. Let's save it. Let's put space here. So it's going to be like a little bit more readable. And we close the UL. We close to div, now what we could do, we could also, because we have it in our sidebar, we can show the archive. The archive is really handy because it gives us the user the ability to click a specific month and see a specific amount of blog posts published in that month. So as I did for this widget, the recent post, I can do exactly the same. Let's copy this and maybe not in the widget category, but outside, paste, and let's use the WP capital underscore widget underscore archive. This is the unique ID of the widget archive. As I say, check the WordPress codex for all the unique IDs that you can find. Also here, these um, we just accept some specific parameters while in the previous one for the recent post, we didn't touch anything. In this case, I want to change just a little bit. So first of all, I have the option to specify if I want the dropdown or not. And also the dropdown value is a Boolean. So zero is false, one is true. In my case, I want to specify the dropdown as true, so one. And I can edit the HTML um, 
generation of this widget with this the third parameter. In my case, I want to just edit the after title parameter. And I want to, because I know that it's generating an H2 after this, I want to use the variable archive content. Oops, 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 archive underscore content. Semicolon, this is closed, that's it. Save it. Now we take a look. Oh, before taking a look, this widget, don't worry too much about it. This is just an example to populate this page. I'm going to do a series of tutorials just to understand and create custom widgets for WordPress. So if you don't understand properly this section, don't worry. We're going to go back on this more deeply and we're going to understand all the parameters of this function and how to create a custom widget. So you're going to have a really good knowledge of the widgets. Right now, just bear with me for a second. Let's use the default widget functions of WordPress and let's not worry too much about understanding these uh, small snippets of code. Save it. Let's go back in our front end. Refresh. And now we are in our wonderful 404 page because we are pointing to the portfolio page that doesn't exist. So WordPress is redirecting to the 404.php file that we created. And we have the title, the description, the search bar, the recent blog post, the most used categories ordered by most used and the count, and we don't have the archive. <laughs> Something is missing here. So uh, let's go back and take a look of our code. Oops, sorry, I missed an S. So the WP widget archives is the actual unique ID of the archive widget. So let's go back here. Let's reload and we have the archive. We specify the dropdown to one. So we have our dropdown. If I want, I can specify drop down to zero or avoid completely the parameter. And refreshing, I'm going to have the list of uh, all the months. Uh, this list of months, it works if you have just three, four months, but if you have like 20 months or like if your blog started in 2001 and you have a tons of months of archive, it's better having a drop down instead of a massive, massive list of months. So also for today's lesson, it's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. We uh, understood how to create an archive page and how to create a 404 page and how to handle bad PHP requests. Um, thank you again for checking this video. Hope you enjoy it. If so, please give it a thumbs up or leave it a comment. If you have any doubt, any question, I'm super happy to help you and answer whatever question you could have. Uh, also, please share this video to spread the knowledge of the awesome word of WordPress. And uh, let's keep doing and let's keep going together to keep building our awesome theme. So thank you again for checking this video and see you next time.